today I'll share fresh and new sunflower crafts. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a sunflower treasure box. I got this box while I was out thrifting, but you can get these for from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or maybe even Joann's. Maybe even in a garage sale. Perhaps you have something like this already at home. We're going to need a little cup, a screwdriver for our hardware, chippy brush, some chalk paint, and I'm going to use these beautiful sunflower transfers from Essential Stencil. I could not wait to get my hands on these and to make some projects, so I hope you enjoy what you're going to see here today. I am going to start off by removing the hardware on the front. So this little box has two little sides that um, kind of latch it together so it doesn't come open. I'm going to take those off and I'm also going to remove the handle. Be sure you keep your screws with your pieces. But these little sections here are decorative and they are in there with nails. So we're going to leave those as is and distress them a bit. I'm going to flip this box over and take the tag off. You can use whatever technique you normally use to get it off. Then I like to use a little sanding behind that to just get any residue off and then continue all over the box so that it has the same texture or the same um, feel all over the box. You can see that when they put the screws in for the hardware, it kind of leaves a little puckered or raised area. I want to be sure that I get all of that off. Now it's important that you take a dry cloth and wipe your item down after you've sanded it because it does have a lot of dust and you don't want that muddying up your paint. I'm going to start with my green here. This is actually like an oatmeal, I believe is what the color is on the bottle. It's like a very light mossy green color. Really pretty color and I've used it in a couple of projects and I really like it. I am using dry brushing here to go all over this and I like to build up from light to heavier till I get it the way I like it. While it's still kind of damp once I've gotten all the sides done I'm just going to wipe a little bit at the decorative uh, corners and if you have something like this on your box you can you know wipe it completely clean if you don't want it to look distressed but I like the look of it possibly have been painted years ago and it's chipping away and you know kind of tarnishing I like the look. So once that is dry, I'm going to take my plaster chalk paint, and you can use acrylics for this if you want. Um, I'm, it won't have the exact same effect, but if you don't have chalk paint, just use what you have here. So I am getting some paint on it and then offloading it onto the, the crafting paper that I have underneath my project, and I'm going to put that right over the top. The idea of having different color paints here is just to kind of make it look like it's been around a long time. Maybe it's had some paint that has been scratched off of it, you know. Just going to give it that look like it's been around a while. I'm going to go back with a damp cloth or I'm using a baby wipe here and just kind of taking some of it off, maybe where it would naturally rub off and leave the rest of the paint on there. I'll do that all over the back, all over the top and the sides. Now I'm going to work on my hardware. I started off by doing it very, very, very lightly and it just didn't match um, the, mm, the same look as the little decorative pieces in the corners. So I do add a little bit more and I'll show you that I do that. But it's always easier for me to start very light and just kind of build it up. So that's what I decided to do on these. I do have all my little screws in a separate cup so that nothing's on the floor because these screws are itty bitty. So I decided to make it a little heavier and it actually turned out a whole lot better. Now you may be wondering why did you even take those off if you were just going to paint them? Well we're going to be adding some rub on transfers and I want those to be underneath all of the hardware. So we have to do it this way to accomplish that look. After I have these done I'm going to add a little paint in the little cup, a little paint on the brush and work on all those little screws that are down in there. 
Sometimes they'll get stuck in the brush, but you can knock them against the side and they will come loose. And then you can empty them out on your paper so they will dry individually. If you want to sand over the top of this to give it uh, a little more of a muted look and kind of blend things a little further together, you can use an emery board, a piece of sandpaper, or you can use one of those little foam hand sander things. I wouldn't use anything like a electric sander because we don't want to take that much off. If you get a little heavy handed, you can go back over it and finish it with your paint or you can just sand it down and that'll kind of mute it out a little bit. So here's one of the pages of those rub-on transfers and I'm trying to get the fit to make sure that it will go on the top and I love that this piece will fit perfectly on the top of the box. I'm going to leave this all together with the backing still on it and cut this out. Personally, if I cut the pieces out, it just makes it go a little bit faster. Just go ahead and cut them out, take off all the negative space that you can, you know, so you don't have a bunch of extra around, and go ahead and place it down. I do take my time here and make sure that I have it positioned exactly where I want it. It's not laying on the box yet. I don't drag it around by laying it down. But once I get it where I want it, I'm going to press it into place. There's a little bit of stickiness that will help it, but it's always important and good practice, I think, to keep one hand at all times on your the upper part, so the outside of it. Now, I'm using a wooden tool here. This came with a basket making kit that a friend of mine at the thrift store picked up, and it is perfect for this for me. I love using wood on wood when I am doing rub on transfers like this. For some reason, it just really gives me a better finish and it really seals that image down onto the wood. So I like to use it. Plus I have small hands and it's not awkward and I'm not dropping it constantly. I can just hold my finger on it, hold the wrist in my palm near my wrist and it just, it fits in there. It just feels right when I'm doing it. So I'll continue to use this. When you order from Essential Stencil, you will get something that you can use to uh, work with your projects. It's plastic, which works fine on glass and, and plastic, but I just like, uh, this is just my preference. This video today is not sponsored, but I have worked with them before and I absolutely love their stencils. I'm going to add some links. If I don't put a card in the corner up here, then I will have some links in the description box of the videos that I did previously. So you can check those out and see if this might be something that you want to add to your crafting kit. Now I'm just going to put that little plastic piece that was on top, I'll put that back down and just rub that down really well so every piece of that is sticking to the box, just to be on the safe side. This is just the most stunning, beautiful artwork. These flowers are beautiful. But you know, they have lots of other things too. If flowers aren't your thing, then you know, you can do birds, you can use any type of seasonal or holiday pieces that you want to use, but sunflowers just do it for me. I love sunflowers in summertime and in fall, so you will see more crafts with sunflowers and such. And I'll probably link for you a video of other sunflower crafts just in case you want to see that. So I'm gonna go along and I'm not too concerned. Some of these are gonna be a little bit big for the, the space that I put them, but you can fold these over the edges and burnish them down and it looks like they're just wrapped around. So I like the idea of, of that. I like the look of it. It's kind of unexpected, I think. Makes it nice, makes it different, makes it your own. That's what we do here on this channel, right? I hope that you feel encouraged when you watch my videos. I know I'm leaving all this in and you can clearly see how you're supposed to do this, but you know, why not have a little chat while we're doing that? I love to bring you ideas that you like, that inspire you, and I want to do that as cheaply or as inexpensively as I can, but still giving you that look that you paid a lot of money for it, you know? We like that. We like the uh, idea of having our house looking special and it bringing us joy when we look around and think, you know what? I made that. I made that and it brings me a lot of joy. So you want to continue along here. And now I'm just taking my little um, tool and I'm just going to go right down in the crack where the box is together. So where my stencil goes over the opening in the box, I'm just going to go right over that line so that this can still open up and still have a really nice finish. Y'all know I love a, 
a print that looks like it was painted on and I feel like that's what it looks like with this project I feel like that's how it looks and you know if you can't paint a rub-on transfer is a very good option for you I cannot do I'm, I'm you know I can do crafts but I'm not the kind of person who can just paint I'm I can't do that not this type of a detail it's beautiful and I admire so much the people who have that gift but that's just not my particular gift so um, I like to use something that gives it that look though and I think you can do it with a stencil and you can take a project that looks I mean we had a just a little box here that just looked like really nothing nothing fancy at all and make it into something that's personalized you know you could use this as a jewelry box you could use this to put receipts in you could use this uh, maybe give it as a gift to somebody you could fill it up with some candy and make it a get well gift you know just wrap a pretty ribbon around it could do any of that with it so the painters tape here was really just used to help hold the box together nice and tightly until I could get my stencils or my transfers on rather and then what you see me doing now is just making sure that those are rolled under so that it doesn't peel away. I've never had one of these transfers to peel away, but I always like to do things, you know, maybe do a little bit extra than trying to have to fix it after you mess it up. Okay, so that's what you see me doing here. Now I've moved the, moved the tape to the sides because we're going to be working on the front. Now you can see the screw, ho screw holes and everything here. And that's why we removed the screws and we sanded it so that when you put your transfer on there it won't make a hole in it or make it look kind of cheap or raggedy want this to look like one piece with the box so i'm just going to put these transfers down and you can put them right over the top of the holes if you can recall where the holes were sometimes on the inside of the box as you can see where the back of the screw would go on this particular one you could not see it but I could pretty much gauge where the hole would be so I'm gonna do the same thing as we did before and um, if you hold it on one side so say you're right-handed like me you can hold it with your left hand and then work from the right to the left while still holding it in place I've never had one to slip on me doing it that way if that helps you you definitely don't want it to move because it could make a skip in your print or it could just really mess you up also be sure when you're taking them off of the backing that you don't put your fingers on the actual picture itself keep it on the clear part because it will transfer to your finger and you'll probably see a little bit on my finger after a while when i start working with the dollar tree transfers on another project so i always want to make sure that i don't make any mistakes here sometimes you can see that the picture looks lighter when it is stuck down so you can see through it that it's actually separated from that that plastic part on the top look how beautiful i love the look of this you know something like this if you used maybe if a bride was um you were given a gift to a bride you could do it in the colors of her wedding and then you could do something old new borrowed and blue in this box how cool would that be? Then she could keep it, you know, it would be a keepsake, that would be nice. You could use something like this with maybe little animal prints. You could use something like this for a baby shower. You know, maybe mom could put birth certificate, a little clipping of the hair, the first tooth, you know, all those sentimental things moms like to keep. It would be good for something like that too, I think. You put love notes in here. Oh, my mind just goes everywhere with it not really sure what i'm going to use mine for yet but this is definitely a keeper so if you pull it up slowly like that if a little bit's lifting up you can just lay it down and it will go right back into the same place so again i'm just going over the cracks there to make sure when i open it i don't peel anything or have any weird seam on it now you can take your tape off if you would like and put the hardware back on of course, if it's easier, you can just leave it on there. You can keep adding. You could mix your, your transfers up and use something with some wording on it. You could use some stencils with this too and add some wording if you would like. I just don't feel the need to put a word on everything anymore. Now, I used to because I, was, I really loved Farmhouse and I still have a special place for Farmhouse, but 
um, rustic has always been my thing. So rustic and cottagey and just woodsy. Um, you know, your tastes kind of change over the years, I think. Maybe not for everyone, but for a lot of people. Your tastes change and, and your personality changes and things change in life, you know? Different things begin to bring us joy and some things aren't as important as they used to be. So see, you just fold it over just like I did there and then you can burnish it down. And you'll see that lift up on its own and then you can just remove that. So if you don't have a box like this, what could you use? What do you think you could use this on? Could you do it on maybe a raw wood picture frame? That would be really pretty. Could you do it maybe on, maybe you could make a sign with it, a sunflower sign. That would be good. If you would like to see how to make that, be sure that you stay tuned in this video because I am going to be making a sunflower sign in this video. So that might be something that you would like to do. And I did it using just some thrifted things that possibly you may already have around your house as well. Y'all, I went and got some new pictures taken and they are so nice. I really, really love the lady who did my pictures. She did such a jo good job. If you've never had professional pictures taken, I'm telling you, I, I don't know. I looked at myself and think, was that, how much airbrushing did this lady have to do on this picture? You know, how much? But regardless, I feel beautiful in the pictures and it has been a very long time since I have felt pretty. So, I don't know, just an idea. If you're kind of down in the dumps, maybe get some pictures made. You know, pretty yourself up and, and have some pictures made. It really boosted my self-esteem. And y'all be seeing those new pictures. I'm gonna be changing some things out on my channel, possibly changing our time frames from five o'clock to six, because it looks like a lot of people are watching more at six o'clock. So we'll see. I'll let you know though in the community tab. Y'all always know that I do things that I share with you, I talk to you, I love that you're here with me and I just feel like y'all are family. I feel a closeness. I know that you can do everything that I show you how to do on this channel too. You can absolutely do these things. The important thing is don't try to measure your your projects by somebody else's. You make it your own. It's not going to be wrong. Just make it your own. If you love it, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, so now is the part where we're going to put the hardware back on. When I put it back on, I wanted to rough it up a little bit to kind of have it matching what we have going on in the corners, those other metal pieces. So that's what I'm doing, roughing it up a bit so it looks old and kind of worn. It's definitely not something you have to do if you want to leave yours, the, you know, the same way that they came. You can definitely do that. I just like to do all the other little extra things. It's kind of a surprise. You could also do something on the inside if you wanted to paint the inside or maybe stencil a special message on the inside. You know, you could do that too. Maybe line it with some fabric or paper. It's really up to you. There's so many options um, with a project like this. I just, again, encourage you to make it your own and save money where you can. Prices of everything seems to be going up, so save money where you can but still have those things that bring you some joy. You see how nice this looks? And it looks like it was painted on. Look at that. You open it, it's seamless when it goes back together. Love it. I hope you like this one too. For the next project, we're gonna do a sunflower lighted home. And we're gonna do three of those. So here are the three houses that I have. I do believe they came from something from Target that I got at the thrift store. I have three wooden jar lids from Candles. We're gonna have glue. I have a little bit of this moss mat. And I have some Dollar Tree sunflower stencils. How beautiful. I hope you can find these because when I went back to look for extras, when I saw how beautiful they actually were in play, they were out. So hopefully I can find some more of these. I'm going to flip this mat over and I'm sure you can get these at a crafting store. I found mine while I was out thrifting so I have no idea what the name of this is or where it came from. 
I'm gonna trace out three circles. Uh, I know what you see right now is two, and then I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch on the inside of the drawn line and cut my circles out. We don't want these to overlap, and there is a little lip on the jar lid, so I wanna make sure these fit the lipped shorter circle rather than the outside bigger circle. I don't want anything hanging down. I want it to fit perfectly on that circle. And it does, just like that. So each one of these lids will get a circle of the moss, like so. I've switched over to a clear tacky glue rather than my wood glue. It just made more sense at the time, so I switched. And I'm going to use that glue. It's very thick, by the way. Good quality glue. I'm gonna make some swirlies on there like I'm decorating cinnamon rolls. And then I'm gonna take my glue gun and make a couple of dots just to grab it and hold it in place until that glue is dry. You wanna do this quickly because the glue will dry fast, the hot glue will. Once all of those are done and dry, I'm gonna kind of try to match up my houses as best I can with these rounds. I think the one in the middle is the furthest from the color, but it's okay, it works out in the end. And then we're gonna get our stencils out and we're gonna put them on the houses. So I'm going to cut these out in little sections, just like we did the big one. And I'm gonna cut them into pieces that will fit nicely on here, on top of these houses. Now these little houses have kind of windows in them. If you get some type of little houses, wooden houses from Dollar Tree or Dollar General or wherever you get them from, there might not be any windows, so there may be one part of this that you don't have to worry with. But I'll show you how to do that. No problem if you have them or if you don't. So I like the look of this, and yes, it is overlapping, but I'm just gonna go ahead and press it down, rub it just a little bit so that it will sit in place. It won't slip around, it just helps get some grip. And then I'm gonna press down over the hard areas. I'm not gonna be pressing over the soft plastic. You can see what I'm doing here. Trying to go over all the places that comes in contact with the house or the wood here. I'm gonna go all the way up and around, still holding it into place. And these definitely will get kind of, uh, they won't be so clear once the image is transferred. And you can see that I'm starting to pull off part of it, but I do that slowly and it just pulls it around those windows. Then I'm gonna take the end of my stick here and I'm going to press it onto the inside. It just kind of wraps it around to the inside so that it doesn't break the image or tear the image, but it still leaves that beautiful image almost as if it has been painted on there. And I just absolutely adore the look. Look at that little cute house. Then of course, take your top, rub it so it stays down. If you have any pieces, like where the pieces that I didn't use because they didn't come in contact, you can add those in. If you've got an extra flower, a leaf, something that comes off, put that back down there and add it to the picture and it's gonna sit right down there. It looks like maybe a marigold or a mom beside the uh, sunflower, I don't know. And then each of these houses have the windows in a different shape. They're a different color and a different size. So I wanna add this one to this one. Up here in that little open space, we're gonna use the same process as we did before. Y'all are going to be professionals at rub on transfers before this video is over. I promise you, if you're not confident, confident enough to use those after this video, watch the video again. Seriously. They're so easy to use. You do not want to be intimidated. Do you see that little black spot on my right thumb? I mean, my right pointer finger? That's a transfer that stuck to me. So they will definitely stick to your skin. Oh, it would have wash off though if you do a little scrubbing. So I took another little piece and I'm gonna add that to the bottom. It's just a little piece of greenery, but it fit nicely in that space. And then I cut off a little blue butterfly. There's two different types of butterflies on this stencil and I'm gonna add it here. Now I certainly could have used the bigger sunflowers on these houses, but they would have covered the entire house. And if that's the look you're going for, you just go for it. You can do it any way you like it. But because of the scale of these houses, I thought it would be better to just use the smaller ones. And I wanted to show you how nice the Dollar Tree stencils are too. 
not stencil, transfers. That's what they are. They're transfers. I do it every video, y'all. Okay, I like this one for this tall one. And I love the idea of it kind of spilling over to the side. And then we can wrap it over the edges. Just like the other one had a little bit wrapped onto the edge. I'm going to do the same thing as we did on the other one. And just be sure that you don't, if you do have these little windows and openings, that you don't push down on it and cause that to lift up and tear the image that's underneath. You don't want that to happen. I'm not really sure that tear is the right terminology either, but you get what I'm saying. Or as Sammy always says, you're picking up what I'm putting down. So then go on the insides here same as we did before and just press those pieces down in there those little extra pieces press them on the inside you don't have to even cut them off don't even bother doing all that work you don't need to do that this is so easy and just a little bit of pressure and just kind of push it up and down a little bit it's going to stick perfectly on the inside it's going to stick to any wood you put it on well for these projects anyway maybe these wouldn't work if you had a piece of wood that was lacquered or you had some type of a thick you know shiny seal on it it might not would work but this always works for me and i'm absolutely loving rub on transfers now i don't know what i was afraid of but i love them and since this is house is kind of big we're going to go ahead and add some more to the bottom make her unique and special and do it the exact same way as we did the other things, the other little things. Okay, some of y'all noticed, of course all y'all noticed that I put out a summer, summer mega video. And I certainly don't suggest that, you know, if you still want to do spring stuff, I've got lots of spring playlists and spring compilation videos that you can watch. I just put the summer stuff up for now because y'all know I'm going to be having the grandbaby soon. We're down to just a matter of weeks. And I wanted to not leave y'all hanging. If I'm gone for a video or two, just know that that is why. Otherwise, I'm going to have my content ready for y'all. Y'all pray for my daughter and her fiance and the baby that she has a speedy delivery that she can get through it. The baby and she will be healthy. And yeah, and if I have her permission, I will try to share a picture or two with y'all. How's that sound? Alrighty, so I'm going to use some wood glue, and but you could use the tacky glue, and some hot glue to put these in place. I'm putting them in sort of the center of the circles, and I am pressing them, and you don't see me holding them for very long, because I figure nobody would want to watch that, but I do actually hold it in place for over a minute to make sure that these will, you know, that that glue will kind of go through the mat and down onto the wood underneath it, and they do end up very stable, so I was happy about that. But give it some time, press it down, and hold it. Let that glue really grip it. So this is how it's going to be. And y'all, we are going to add some lights. I've been missing my lights. we got to add some lights, y'all. These are just their bottle lights that we're using, like cork lights. We're going to use those because I can hide that little cork part a whole lot easier than a big square from Dollar Tree. But you know, do what you have to do, whatever you have to do. Now I'm using these cut pieces of popsicle stick to stick down on one side so that it is kind of holding the wire in place without gluing the wire down to the project. You can glue yours down if you want, but y'all know I'll do projects and recycle things. So if I want to use this again, I will have to be able to remove it. Look how pretty. <gasps> Oh, it's so cute. There's something about a warm light shining through a window. Mm, love it. Just a little bit of glue on the back is going to hold this down and keep it in place. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other lights and at the very end screen you will be able to see these lit up. So no worries, it's going to skip. No worries. So the next project is a sunflower farm sign. We're going to need some paint brushes. So I've got my stencil brushes, my bridge brushes, and a big brush. I've got the same tool I've been using. 
use what you have for this. I have some dark chocolate and black paint, a little cup to mix those in. And I'm going to have two colors of chalk paint. We're going to use Spanish moss and we're going to use that oatmeal. This time we're going to use a combination of a stencil, just part of this stencil, and some of the rub-on transfers. So you can kind of see these are what we have left to use. And then I got this little section of plywood from the thrift store. You can use a um, probably one of those little craft boards from Dollar Tree. Maybe you could use that. So this is an 18-inch ruler, and we're going to add another probably 5 inches to that, so maybe 23 inches. And then it is 23 inches by 17 inches. Here's that beautiful green moss paint. And I'm going to do a dry brushing on this as well. So I'm just going to load up that bigger, what you could call a chippy brush, because that's really kind of what it is. And I'm going to offload some of that onto the paper. Really try to tap that out so that I can start laying down streaks on this board. This is the look I'm trying to create here is that this sign has been around for years and years. Maybe this piece of wood has been used for lots of different projects. It's been painted many times. Maybe it's even got some of that green pollen that is stuck to it from being outside on the side of a barn, possibly. Um, I'm going to add a little bit to all the edges as well. Once that is all dry, I am going to take my oatmeal paint do the same thing here with that same green brush, load it, offload it, and then I'm going to start adding that. This makes such a nice aged finish, in my opinion. I, I really like that, especially considering that spring and summer, you got pollen everywhere in the south. It just covers everything. My car looks like this right now. Unfortunately, that's true. It really does. It needs to be washed. So I'm just going to dry because I want to make sure that I'm not touching anything that's wet and I'm not smearing anything so that we can go on to the next step. You can set it in front of a fan. You can leave it walk away. When you dry a brush, it doesn't take that long to dry. Once it's dry, it feels, it's got kind of a gritty feel. So I'm just going to go over it with my sanding block and just, I'm not doing this hard. I'm just kind of going over it. And I'm also going to go over the edges because whoever cut this piece of plywood, it splintered a little on the backside. So I'm just going to sand that down because I do not want to um, get any splinters in my hands. And then I will be wiping off the dust that comes off. And you can see here that it comes off on this dry cloth, a lot of it. And I don't want that to muddy up the paint that we add or get underneath and interfere with our stencils and our transfers sticking down. So there's really no true reason as to where I put each of these flowers. I just went ahead and started with one big bunch and thought, okay, we'll start in the left corner and I'm placing it down, holding it, pressing it down. And then I'll get my little stick there and just start working on it. Somebody left a good tip. If you don't have any of these types of tools, you can grab an old credit card and try that and see how that does for you. That's definitely a good tip. It is one that I have heard before, and I've actually done that before in my early days, but it's, I don't think it's anything we've talked about recently. So just know that you can make things work with what you have. Okay, don't get discouraged. Now y'all are pros already, right? Y'all know exactly how to do this. You know what to do. So for this one, there's a lot going on in it. It looks good. Looks like we've pieced it together with a bunch of goodies. And these two larger flowers, I'm going to have one on each of the bottom corners. You can flip them around so they don't look the same. You can put them in the position where they're mirroring each other. Whatever, you know, uh, floats your boat, lights your candle, whatever. It's okay. Do it how you like it. Once we get that one down, this is how it will look down there in the corner. And then we'll add the other bottom corner. And then I'll show you how you can layer up if you want to make them a little bigger. If you want them to have a little more punch, I'll show you what to do for that. 
So I'm just kind of making sure I've got the same distance from the corners. It's already been burnished. I skipped that part for you because y'all are pros now, right? Y'all are pros. Self-sufficient. You don't even need me anymore. But I hope you stick around anyway because I really enjoy commenting and talking to y'all. I sure do. All right, so now we have this one in the corner and we're gonna build on this one because it needs a little something extra to carry the weight that the other corners have, right? So we're gonna add another one right beside it. Littler sunflower facing outward. We're gonna add another one to the bottom. That's the smallest one. And then we're going to measure out where we wanna put our sunflower stencil. Just making sure that it's centered kind of line it up so it's square with the bottom. Take my painter's tape and just put the tape over the edges to hold it down. Three sides usually will do the trick. I'm gonna use about a half a teaspoon of my chocolate brown and I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon of black. I want this to be a warm black or a dark, dark brown rather than just a jet black. So I'm going to take my little brush that comes with well, it came with my my kit here with all my stencils and stuff. And I'm going to offload it. And this time I'm going to do the swirl technique. Because when I did the other technique in the B videos, I did not use this technique. I used the pouncing technique. And it left my edges a little fuzzy and I had to go back and fix it. So I thought, you know what? We're going to do it this technique and see what the coverage looks like. So I can tell you this. I really it's, It was fun doing this. It was different. It was fun. I'm still learning how to use stencils for sure. But you know, you got to do what works for you. So I'm just going to continue here and make circles to the left, circles to the right. I'm just going to make little circles all around with this brush until this word is completely finished. Using the same technique, I am going to go in with that same brush and go over the word mark it. Now look at this finish. Oh my goodness. It is so crisp. Now, while it's drying, I'm going to grab a couple of little pieces that came off of my Dollar Tree transfers, stencils, and I'm going to add them up here to bulk this corner up a little bit more. So I added a little bit to this part, and this is just the greenery section on there. Okay, and then I'm gonna add another one right here. And to me, that looks like it belongs together. That just really makes it pop and I love it. So I'm using my, uh, one of my bridge brushes and going over each of those little gaps where they, the stencil is held together. Also love doing this. Oh my goodness, this, these brushes are fantastic. And again, not sponsored. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with market. Now, some people like to leave the gaps in there and that's fine if you wanna do that. Here are the projects that we did. And here are those little houses. And you can see, now the candles in the back are lit so you can't see it as well, but in, in a minute on another screen, I'll show you a little bit better look at how they look when they don't have all the lighting on them. I just have a lot of lighting in the studio. Here's that beautiful treasure box, our trinket box, the other little houses. And this is how they look with the lighting. So now I've kind of turned off the overhead lighting and you can see the glow there. That's not from the candles in the back. That is actually from that little house. Same here, the candles are off, but you can see the glow from the lighting in the back. See there, how they look? You could always Mod Podge over if you wanted. Thank y'all so much for hanging in with me on this long video. I'm gonna see you again real soon. Bye.